Thank you all for joining us this evening for a deeper dive into visioning. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a review of the updates and we're excited that you want to learn more. We have just a few suggestions to have an optimal experience in this virtual world. So we're gonna role model for you exactly what you would do in a virtual delivery to help the participants really get familiar with the Zoom platform and have an optimal experience. So we would request that everyone stay muted unless you're actually speaking. Yeah. There are a couple of tools that we'll be using throughout this session. One is the raise hand function. So if you go to the participant menu option on your Zoom, you will see an opportunity to raise your hand. So why don't we just practice that? And if you don't see it in participants, you should see something that says more with three little dots and you'll see raise hand there. Great. That's one of the ways we'll be communicating this evening when you have something to share. And then once you've shared, we ask you to go ahead and lower your hand. So you go to the same place you did to raise it and click lower your hand and you'll just take that down. The other way that you can communicate is in the chat function. So you will see a chat menu item on your Zoom screen. Or again, if you don't see that, look for the word more with three little dots and you should see the ability to chat. So let's practice that. If everyone could just open the chat and very quickly just put in the district that you're from. <laughs> Terrific. So uh, again, we want everyone to try to stay muted throughout the evening so we can hear our presenters. If you have a camera, we prefer you turn that on that way that we know you're here and it's a way to stay visually engaged. So with that, uh, are there any questions? We will go ahead and begin. So thank you. Kathy? Well, welcome to you all. Um, one of the things we'd like to start with tonight is a poll to find out how many of you have been continuing with on-site visioning. So we're inclusive of those experiences, sorry, as we share with you today. Um, so if you could please respond to this poll, have you or are you doing in-person on-site visioning since the pandemic began in February? Yes, and you continue. Uh, we have done some, no or no, but we wanna start again. If you can click on one of those and then hit submit. Okay. We'll give it another few seconds. And thank you for your answers. And Kathy, here are the results. Okay, so it looks like there has been just a little bit that has been going on, mostly no. Um, and about 25% of you want to uh, get started again. Um, and that's good to know. Um, though we are offering this training for virtual visioning, we still support and applaud on-site visioning. It will, works well for some clubs and members. It works easier for districts that are geographically compact so that facilitators don't have to travel. And we think, we think someday this pandemic will, be, will come to a close and you'll have to decide if you want to embrace on-site visioning again. In the meantime, virtual visioning is a great tool and it will absolutely help those districts that have geographical challenges that have always fought that, uh, that bit. The process of visioning remains very similar to what it was when you all probably went through training. The biggest challenge is that we were in, the biggest change is that we recommend sending the writing exercise ahead of the event to free up time during the event to include an introduction to action plans and practice of the same. 
Rita will drill into the why a little bit later, but simply stated, we find that when members engage in the practice at the visioning session, they're far more likely to have success with implementation afterwards. So tonight, you see the process on the screen. We're gonna go through a number of enhancements to our standard process, but the virtual aspects of visioning will be addressed in the next webinar in two weeks. So tonight we'll cover that status assessment, the new club profile and rotary visioning questionnaire. We're gonna talk about the writing ex exercise and the resource sheets we recommend sending with it. The next webinar will cover rules of the Zoom, the PowerPoint and how it's presented, the extraction, voting, and summary. And then today we'll also cover the master plan, the action plan, and the vision to success. So let's look next at a new resource we're working on right now. One of our visioning chairs was, has kindly shared the email chain that he uses from beginning to the end of the process. We're working on getting these standardized and posted to the website for your use. As you can see on the pre-event slide, the content is listed along with who the emails go to and what the attachments included are. So the first one is a confirmation to the club sponsor, the AG, the facilitation team, and telling them all, here's what to expect. The second one sends the writing exercise and the resource sheets along with instructions. The third one is the Zoom invitation and reminding them of what time the visioning event will be. And the fourth one is two prep emails. These are for the facilitation team. The first one sends the club profile and the RVQ that had been completed so that the team knows a little bit about the club. And the second one is the assignments for the team and the links to practice videos. Next, the post event. This sends out the, these are emails that are the cover sheet for sending out the voting result and the PowerPoint template for the club assembly. And then the other one is the vision to success guide and the master and action plan templates, again, along with their explanations for how they might consider using them. These emails have the critical information needed at each step. And so you won't have to be reinventing the wheel as you send out the information. And since they're all in a word format, they can easily be adapted if there's something else that you would like to add. Rita? Thanks, Kathy. Analytics are important for the club and also for the district and beyond. The club profile filled out by the president or the club liaison is one of the analytic tools as well as used for creating a current baseline of the club. It asks seven measurable questions such as number of members, number of volunteer hours, dollars raised, etc. It is given again a year later to see any improvement in the club after achieving some of their goals. It is critically important that you get this information before visioning and again one year later, then share with our analytics team. The RVQ, or Rotary Visioning Questionnaire, is a club survey that gives the leadership an idea about what the members think about their club at the present time. It is also used to get the club thinking about the areas that the writing exercise will address. It has one general question of asking if the club is healthy and then 11 questions related to the areas we focus on in the writing exercise. It can also be used for analytics to see how the members' views of the club have changed or not over time. It should be sent as a survey monkey to the club members. The writing exercise has been rewritten to be aligned with Rotary's action plan. There is a section on each one of ro the Rotary's action plan priorities that, that are increasing our impact, expanding our reach, enhancing participant engagement, and increasing our ability to adapt. As we said in the informational meeting, this is for a couple of reasons. First, 
these four areas in the Rotary Action Plan are actually the epitome of action. We want the clubs and their members to be thinking, posting, utilizing, and engaging these four statements. Second, we have always felt that Rotary really becomes Rotary when members engage beyond the club. Our belief is that it is a way to connect members with Rotary International in a stronger form. And of course, we also add the areas that you are familiar with, fundraisers and the Rotary Foundation, and if applicable, their club foundation. Kathy? Yeah, along with that writing exercise now, we recommend that you send out these three resource sheets. <coughs> members to be familiar with the RI action plan as discussed on the last slide. So we send a copy of that along with, with the, the writing exercise. We also send a copy of the new club model sheet, which members might find useful in generating ideas and getting a broader understanding of what other clubs are doing to adapt and remain relevant in their communities. Information on the foundation is also sent for newer members to get an overview and even for those veteran members to be reminded of things like what every Rotarian every year means or what major donor means. So we wanna just take a quick pause and see if you have any questions on this part of the plot process. Either raise your hand in the participant function and we'll call on you to unmute or you can put your question in the chat box. Okay, anyone? Okay. Of course, during the next step of the event, after the writing, ex the writing exercise will be extracted and then the summary synthesis highlighting the club, the club's top ideas is delivered with energy. After the club hears the summary in which all the top ideas are synthesized, they need to organize the ideas in some way. So we suggest that they create a master plan that lays out the ideas and the goals they want to accomplish over the next three years. Some ideas and goals will cover more than one year. Some ideas and goals will be postponed until the second or third year. We then show the club members what the master plan looks like. We explain that in the upcoming weeks, they'll have a group that should be working to make recommendation about which of the ideas from the visioning event will be inserted into year one or into year two or into year three of the master plan. These ideas will then be discussed when the leadership shares the results with the club. We do ask them to wait to fill out who will lead on the master plan until an action plan and goal have been developed. So let's now look at what we share with them on how to create achievable goals. We want them to develop goals that are specific and have a time frame. We tell them that achievable goals means that they define what they want to have happen in measurable terms. We show them the first example. We use sending two students to RILA in the Rotary year 2021-2022 as a goal. This is a realistic goal which can be measured and has a timeline for its accomplishment. The next one is realistic, is measurable, and has a timeline. We're going to increase membership by 18 over three years. And as you read them, so are the global grant and the fundraiser example. All four of the goals are realistic, measurable, and have a timeline. Later in our vision to success section, you will, uh, we will explain that you will develop a process for how you create that master plan. Once they know all about the master plan, then for each idea or goal on the master plan, they will need to create an action plan. 
We tell them that after developing that master plan, we suggest that they develop an action plan for each idea or goal that they created for year one. The action plan will define the tasks that they must accomplish in order to achieve that goal. Then once all the tasks are generated, they predict the outcome. Predicting the outcome allows them to answer the fifth planning question, which is, how will we know we've arrived? That is what the action plan looks like. It has the goal at the very top and then has a group of lines for all the tasks that need to be completed in order to achieve the goal. Additionally, it asks, who needs to lead accomplishing that task? Who else will help with that task? Are there any resources required to accomplish that task? When will they start? When do they believe that they will be done? And lastly, at the very bottom of the action plan, they predict what the outcome will be once they have accomplished that goal. It is very important to go over this slide as it gives them an example of what an action plan looks like. The action plan asks them to define who will do what by when. It asks that task needs to be accomplished and then it, in the case of this goal, okay, we send two students to RILA in 2021-2022. So it asks first the what, which is to ask the board to approve the fee to send two students to RILA and to appoint a RILA chair. So who's going to do that task? Well, the youth services chair needs to do that task since RILA is a youth service program. When will that task need to be accomplished? That particular task needs to be accomplished at the next board meeting on November 22nd and be very specific with the date. Will there be any resources needed for that task? Yes, they might need to check on the fee for RILA and also on the youth protection policy as the board might want to know those two pieces of information. We let them know it does not stop with that one task. A goal might have eight to 10 or even more tasks before it is accomplished. So we suggest to them that they use one action plan form for each idea that they created on the master plan. We let them know that the president will get examples of both the master plan and the action plan in the vision to success guide. At the bottom of the action plan form, there is a bo box that says outcome. We tell them to use that box to answer the last planning question, which is how will we know we have arrived? We tell them it is important to predict the outcome. It is, uh, if circumstances change, then their predicted outcome can change. It's a flexible and fluid document. In the example we used, we might say that the outcome is having those two students that went to RILA present at our club. In learning theory, practicing what one has learned serves to ingrain the learning in the brain. So time is spent having the participants actually develop an action plan. This helps them to practice the skill they will need to achieve their vision. In an on-site session, they are broken into small groups. In a virtual session, they are sent to breakout rooms. In each method, they are given 15 minutes to practice creating an action plan for one of the goals the facilitator has chosen out of their list of extracted ideas. When brought back together, they have a brief chance to share the experience with each other 
as an entire group and to feel empowered with a clear expectation of what they will need to accomplish. The vision to success volunteers are much more eager to step up with having not only a practice session, but also witnessing the enthusiastic participation of their fellow club members in that process. This slide explains how the practice session will work. In an on-site, you might say, now we are going to give you the opportunity to practice creating an action plan. I have chosen one of your top ideas and have created an achievable goal for you to use. Have that done ahead of time so you won't have to do it on the fly. Here is an action plan document for you to use and then you pass out the documents if you're in person. I will put you into groups and want you to make an action plan for the goal I will tell you once you have gotten in the groups. Then you put them into groups. You three will be together, you three will be together, you three will be together, etc. As you get into your groups, please choose a reporter and pause and have them choose a reporter. Then read the goal to them. Have them write the goal on the top of the line on the action plan where it says goal. Give them 15 minutes to generate an action plan for the goal. Then after 15 minutes, have several of them read their action plan tasks. Now, if you're in a virtual uh, venue, then we are going to do that tonight so you can practice. So here's what you would say. Now we're going to give you the opportunity to practice creating an action plan. I have chosen one of your top ideas and have created an achievable goal for you to use. You will be sent to the breakout rooms automatically. You will use the action plan form that was emailed to you or grab the one in the chat box our tech host has made available so you can download to your computer right now. And it should be in the chat box right now for you. Here is the goal. And please write this down. Create a virtual trivia contest fundraiser by May 2021 to raise $5,000. Please put that goal at the top of the action plan form where it says goal. I will repeat it. Create a virtual trivia contest fundraiser by May 2021 to raise $5,000. And I think it's probably put in the chat box for you also. Please use the action plan form and create an action plan for that goal. Choose a reporter to share your action plan when you return to the main room. Only for tonight, you may notice that there is an observer in your breakout who will be muted and have their video off. They are only there to observe and you would not have an observer in an actual visioning event. They're going to give us feedback about how the breakout went. Also, if you see a pop-up to join the breakout, please join. Are there any questions? Jill, do you see any questions? I do not. Okay, please send everyone to the breakout rooms. Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> okay, let me know when they're all back, Jill. That stuck up a big bunch to come. Okay, let me know. <laughs> Not the outcome. All right. Thanks for coming back. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and mute yourself again, because you probably have come back unmuted, and I'm going to do the same.
Okay. As you know, you chose a reporter in your group. And so what I want you to do now is reporters, please raise your hand in the participant function and I will call on you to unmute and to share your action plan for the goal that you were assigned. Who wants to be first? I, know, I guess it's me just because I wrote them down, so. <laughs> and who is that? Pat Donahue, Pat. Hey, Pat, please read us your action plan. Okay, we basically, uh, as we discussed this, looked at general topic areas that we would need to cover as actions and tasks. And we decided that to begin with, we would need to research who's already doing this to find some successful people. Um, so, because you can learn a lot as our club has uh, from uh, people who've already uh, done something like this. For this contest, uh, virtual contest, we need to figure out the number of participants, if, if there's a, a, a number. Uh, let me go back on the research part. We also talked about, we'd need to have some kind of a platform that supported this. And um, because they're, they're out there. So that's another thing when we are talking about part of the research. A number of participants, do we want to have individuals participating or teams? Uh, how will we award people who are the winners? Uh, what will the entry fee be? We need to determine that. There would have to be publicity. And as a part of the publicity, we would need to include what these funds are going to be used for because that's often a big selling point for the people who are participating. Uh, we would probably want to have some sponsors. The sponsors might be uh, those who would offer the, the prizes for the people that win. It could be restaurants or Amazon cards or something like that. Um, we'd need a group to develop the content um, that we'd have to also figure out how we're going to distribute prizes. Something we also talked about that was kind of fun is we, when we worked on content, possibly use the areas of Rotary, the six areas generally, and then develop some trivia around that. Um, and there was one more thing that I think I left out. Um, it would be really great if this participation could be just as broad as it could, because Laura in our group said she's participating. She's in Oklahoma. She's participating in a virtual 5K in Tyson's Corner in Virginia. So we could, you could go really far with this. Uh, cha-ching, cha-ching. We could make a lot of money with this. I really like this idea. I'm taking this with me. <laughs> All right. Um, I believe Jeff Taylor was next. Okay, wait a minute. Let me oh, ask, sorry. let me ask you this. Um, did you decide who was going to do um, the lead on each one of those tasks? And did you look at the requirements that you might have some resources you need? Okay. We didn't so, get that far. Okay. We so just what, didn't you, get that far. And I think generating all the tasks and then going back to fill in those other parts then. Well, I think so. And I think probably if, if I were working with a club doing this, there are certain, I mean, I'd know the people that, um, you know, I, but anyway, that's just as far as we got. We identified the tasks and had some discussion around that. Great tasks. Yeah. Loved your list. Okay. Who's next? Carol, are you're still muted? You'll need to unmute. Sorry, I've been confused all night on mute and unmute. Um, all right, so we um, started with our um, action, and uh, really, they're looking at the resources that we're going to need for this, and we said we're going to need tech support, perhaps PowerPoint. We need questions and answers for people to come up with those. Um, we would need a personality, somebody who could really present this with a lot of fun and flair. And uh, we would need some kind of a scoreboard. We'd need judges to be able to determine if answers are close enough to what um, the um, uh, intended answer should be. We need a timekeeper. We'll need prizes, appropriate backdrop uh, for people who are leading. We need writing utensils, perhaps, uh, for scorekeeping or virtually we may not need that. And um, uh, in terms of uh, who will help, so we said, um, go back here for a moment here, our um, fund committee, club fund committee would um, actually lead the charge on this. 
and the chair of that committee, but they had the real lead, and that we were going to ask members of the club's welcoming committee to also be involved with this planning and implementing process. Um, so our start date would be now, and our end date, May 21st, and of course, our outcome that we're looking for is $5,000. Okay, so you had a lot of different tasks and you looked at who might be doing those, some resources you needed, and when you were going to start. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, next, Jeff Taylor. Okay, so um, what we looked at was, you know, the first thing would be to form a committee. We would have a committee chair, depending on the, the type of club, this could be, you know, the, the fundraising committee or a subcommittee of that. Um, people would be helping with, would be the members of the committee. The actual start date would be immediately as far as getting the committee formed. Uh, we would then look at um, some of the resources we would need, which would be one, a person who pretty much knows about running a trivia contest or to do some research on that. Two, a person with knowledge of how to do a virtual contest. And, and those would also be started immediately uh, in December and finishing that portion in January. Um, and then we would want to know who the, uh, who would market the event, um, you know, to the community. And that would be different members within the, com within the committee, but also the entire club. And then also who is going to be the target audience. We would prefer that, you know, we would have the club, but uh, have a way to reach out to members of the community and that would start in January uh, and move forward to the actual time of the event. Um, we would also need to define what the contest is going to be, what, what type of trivia, um, determine how to invite uh, the audience. Uh, and you would have an audience uh, that would not participate, but who could contribute. Uh, and then you would also have contestants uh, who would be competing for prizes and they would pay some, some form of a fee. And um, we would determine that uh, in, Janu in January and then re be recruiting those people uh, through the early part of next year. We would also need to get sponsors uh, and define the different levels of sponsorship. You know, we would be defining that in, in uh, December and January and then recruiting those um, through the period up to the actual time of the contest. We would also be getting donations uh, for the prizes. And if we would need to, we would buy prizes in order to make it more uh, a more attractive contest for people. And we would be getting that all the way up until the actual time of the event, but beginning in January. Um, and we would have to get the questions that are gonna be asked. And then we would have to have the people that are gonna be be running, running the contest. So the committee would be the, you know, you'd have a person from the committee that might each person on that committee might take a different uh, portion of those tasks. Uh, different members of the committee would help. And then depending on how broad it is, you'd bring in other members of the club, you know, for different people could run it. Uh, different people could be getting donations. Different people could be recruiting sponsors. So the outcome would be uh, in May, we would have a successful contest raising $5,000 or more. Okay, thank you, Jeff. And I, I like what you said, you know, we're going to have our main committee and then we're going to recruit other people to help us. So it's really important that when you start developing that plan to say, okay, we need to recruit sponsors. Uh, John is going to be in charge of that and he'll get some other people to help him. So, um, you know, maybe uh, John comes and says, hey, I got so and so, so and so and so and so to help. So you put that on your action plan. So, one of the reasons that you do that is because then you can go back and really uh, look at who participated in help and number one, count those hours to put in Rotary Club Central, but, but also uh, to acknowledge those people for the help that they might give. So thank you. All three of these have been absolutely marvelous. Who's next, uh, Jill? Uh, why don't we, I believe, um, Susan. Susan, okay. okay. Susan? Hello, everyone. So I would like to echo um, what Jeff said. Pretty much our discussion went uh, just the way he outlined it. We definitely talked about getting a committee um, and having that committee in place. We also talked about subcommittees or other resources, so sponsorship, marketing, public image, 
Um, we did talk about loose timelines, uh, what we need in place when, um, how do we know we're going to, how do we know we're going to be successful um, when we have the, the items in place. We talked about technology, um, fund rate, uh, um, finance, getting our finance person in, in place, depending on how much it would cost to use the platform. So I would echo pretty much what Jeff said um, in almost that order. So that's where we were with our discussion. Okay, perfect. Who's next? Maybe one more and then we can uh, wind this up. Okay. Uh, we have How about, I believe um, Mary Grace, I believe you were one of the early hand raisers. Okay, Mary. Okay. Well, let me share a little bit about our committee then. We didn't go quite as deep as some of the other committees. Um, to be honest, we're a little challenged at the beginning because most of us did not really understand the trivia contest. So we did discuss that. Um, one person did and was very familiar with it. So we named her as the, um, the lead. We would start immediately and do our research first because we know that we need to research quite a bit um, before we can present this to our club, presenting it to our club, then hopefully in the first week in um, January so that we can get everything off to a start. Um, we recognize that we will need other people other than our committee to help. Um, primarily, we need someone with technology experience that can lead us from taking it from a live event to a virtual event. Um, right now, we're familiar with the tables, that we can sell tables and make money that way. But um, we got to the point of pretty much we're setting up our committee to begin with and we're researching and then hoping that we can garner some of our club members to help us with the next task as we move forward. Okay, thank you. And the one major thing that you really need to dwell on when you're having people report is to fill out each of those blanks. Uh, who, what the task is and who's gonna do it, when they're gonna start, what resources are needed. Really important to coach them and get them into doing exactly what you all did tonight. You did very well. So I'm really excited that that all of you could do those kinds of things in, in your uh, action plan. So right now we're going to pause and ask you if there are any questions. So please raise your hand in the participant function and Jill's gonna call on you to unmute and ask your question or put your question in the chat box about the master plan that Kathy talked about or the action plan, which you just experienced. And while, while we're waiting for those, Rita, I'd, I'd just like to add in too, you guys become a coach when, you, when they come back from the chat room or when they're done with the breakout rooms. Part of your job is to coach them and to say, keep, them, keep with that who will do what by when that that's really going to be part of their success. Their success is really starting to fill that out. Maybe not tonight, but the second thing is you all came back with a little bit different thing. And that's good for them to recognize too, that they broke out into separate groups, but not everybody came up with the exact same plan. So there's that beauty in having different people looking at it as they start to build out those plans is to bring other people in as resources. Thanks, Kathy. I believe Patricia had the first question. Yes, the the action plan form that that uh, was that you gave us is that by any chance a fillable form online or fillable? In other words, yes. you yes. could type it type on it as you yes. type it as you're planning. Yeah. It's yes. an inter interactive PDF. Yes. Oh, it is. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Any other questions? Any questions about sending them to the breakout room or um, dividing them into groups? So there is a question in the chat box. Does every breakout get the same goal? Yes. Uh, whether yes. it's in person on site or whether it's a virtual session, you as a facilitator will pick one idea create a goal on the fly and give everybody because you want them all to be doing the same thing so that they see kind of that, that idea that they're not all going to come up with the exact same things. Any other questions? Joan has a question in 
in the chat. Um, how, how many do you suggest be involved in the action plan? In the breakout rooms? Well, um, usually when you're in a group together um, in person, about three people is a really good, three or four people is a really good group. When you're in the breakout rooms, you can do any amount, but I would suggest about five, maybe six, um, because uh, you, then you'll have less reporting later on, but more people participating within the group. And tonight we had a large group, but at a typical visioning session, you would only have that 12 to 15 to 20 to 25, whatever that number is at a typical visioning session. Right. Depending on what that is, any, anywhere from three to five or six. And Joan's question was how many total? I think that that was the question you were asking. Okay. Oh, total people at a visioning. Is that what you're asking? No more than 30. Okay, um, Roberto wants to know how much time do we allow? And then Pat, as kind of a follow-up as well, what time do you recommend for the visioning session? So I guess the time in general for the session and then the time for the breakout might be both questions. Uh, you mean for uh, the whole session? We do it in, well, there's certain, there's different ways to do the visioning and that you'll, you'll more go into next time when you do the virtual uh, visioning and you're, you're taught the virtual skills, um, but you can do it in two sessions uh, of two hours each. Usually the first one takes about two hours, but the second one probably takes about an hour and a half. Um, we don't quite run to two hours at that point in time. Um, there is another way where you can do it in a three and a half hour session. Um, so all that will be explained to you in virtual. But when you're on site, you'll do it in a four hour session. Is that right, Kathy? Yes. Yes, and, and Roberto, to answer Hi. your question, when you break them out into groups, give them about 15 minutes before you yeah. call them back so they have enough time to really dig into that, into that plan. Right. It goes fast. Thank you. That's exactly. what I was looking for, how much time uh, yes. to develop the action plan. Yes. 15 minutes. Keep, in mind, keep in mind that this is just a practice session. So when they go home and back to their clubs, and they start pulling these ideas and do them, they might sit down for an hour and work on, a, on an action plan or, or a couple of one hour sessions. But for this nice, for the practice session, it's just to get them used to it, looking at the session. How do we break these down? How do we start, who will do what by when? So it's just a practice session. Any other questions? I do not see any other hands raised and um, nothing else. Okay. Well, Kathy will then walk you through the next steps, which we call vision to success. Yeah, as we mentioned on the on the informational webinar, uh, this this slide used to simply be called next steps. Um, we've adapted that. We've adapted it to include next steps but also to include the very important next step, which is success. That's why we changed the title. So if you were on site, you would use newsprint and put it up just like you see in the picture to perform the next, to start to do those assignments. If virtual, you would use a Word document to capture the information about volunteers to perform the next steps, which we call vision to success. So this, slide explains the next steps and asks for volunteers to commit to helping the president achieve the ideas that were generated in visioning. So tonight I'm gonna to take you, I'm gonna uh, I'm going to go through this slide as though we were actually at a visioning event and Jill is gonna help you uh, see how this looks. So again, if it was on site, you'd have a uh, some newsprint on the wall and I would say one of you needs to compile the wall charts, recording all of the information that you've got up on the walls, and then recording perhaps your top three choices, which becomes the basis for your master plan. We have an Excel template to send to you in order to compile the ideas. Who would be willing to take those wall charts? And then you get a volunteer and compiled by when. 
If virtual, which is what we're going to go through tonight, the scribe will use this electronic form. So I would say your top ideas in each area become the basis of your master plan. Who will get the list of ideas compiled by the scribe? And you get, we have Laura has volunteered, and we'll send those to you. The number two question. Next, you're going to create your club's statement of purpose, motto, tagline, slogan, whatever feels right for your club. Often this comes from the questions about what does your club stand for and what are your club attributes? Typically, this is done with a committee of three to five people that brings a recommendation back to the club as to what your motto will be and should be done prior to the club assembly. Who would be willing to lead this committee? And you get a volunteer. Jeff has volunteered. Who will help Jeff? And again, we want three to five volunteers. Nice balance of gender, maybe. And when will you guys meet for the first time to work on this? The third step in the vision to success, you'll start to need to decide how are you going to develop this process for generating your master plan using the, each of the top ideas. This is going to be different for every club because you're talking about what's going to get done in year one, what's going to get done in year two, what's going to do get done in, in year three. So it's different for every club, but certainly can be done with your existing committees, with your board, or maybe with some of you here at the visioning tonight. Who wants to be on the, this is a committee that will develop a process to create what goes on the master plan in each year. Who wants to be on the committee to work on this master plan? And then you get a few volunteers. And when do you think you can have this done? Now we go into step four. Now you need to engage the club in what has happened in order to get a collaborative commitment to this new plan. Likely they will have heard about the visioning event and will be excited to hear what's happened. Remember that you came to this group, to this event as a group, so this presentation should be done as a group. If a number of you are sharing, this will help engage the rest of the club and they will see it's not one person's plan, it's the club's plan. We have a PowerPoint for you to use to describe what the visioning is about and the results of the visioning. Who wants to help your president present to the club? And again, you get a couple of people to volunteer. President, when would be a good time to share the results of the visioning with your club? And you get a commitment of an assembly and a date. And as we all know, typically, they'll do that right there on the spot. Would one person or group of you be willing to be the impact leader or club impact team? Not doing everything, but making sure that the club keeps moving forward with this vital work. And let them talk about it sometimes. They may just talk about it a little bit and decide we want one person or we want this to be a committee. Of course, this club, then you say that, of course, the impact leader or team's job will be for the next three years on a continual basis, working to keep the plan alive and vibrant. And then next, the next step, really you're just talking this one through. You will develop and have a master plan with goals to accomplish over the next three years. Now you need to have a process by which the action plan for each of these goals will be created. We encourage you to give this task to your committees after presenting the results. When the committee generates its own plan, it's more likely to follow through with the plan. So once you've got this all screened up and they've got their volunteers and their names, you can say, you can also mention at this point, in addition, we have a new vision to success guide full of resources and ideas for the club to help with these steps, which will be sent to the president. We're gonna take a quick look here at the vision to success guide. I know you won't be able to read it all, but as you can see, uh, as Jill scrolls over the vision to success guide, each of those six assignments in the guide gets a deeper dive to help remind the club of what they heard at the event about each of these steps. Hearing again what was just said, but adding more helpful information to guide them through those next steps. It has additional ideas for how to keep the plan alive, share the plan, both inside and outside of the club, a critical part of successful execution. It has examples of a completed master plan 
and a completed action plan. This was just piloted with the district and the feedback from the chair was that the first club really found it helpful. He then shared the guide with his team of facilitators and they were so excited about its ability to be helpful that they're in the process of sending this guide out to the last five clubs that had a facilitation event. So we're really excited as, about this as a resource for you. As you coordinators and facilitators utilize the guide, please give us input on other ways you have seen or used or things that you've tried or thought would work to ensure the club's success in the implementation stage. Please send any ideas to Rita or me for inclusion in the future when we update the vision to success guide. So then you go back and you say to the club, after everything is developed, please be sure to send the master plan to your assistant governor and your district governor so they can support you in your process of achievement. At the end of the evening, you probably wanna give them an evaluation form. If it's on site, it's a paper evaluation form. If it's virtual, you will have them do, and you'll learn how to do this in the next session. You'll have them do a poll to get some feedback from you about how the event went. There are four questions and you just have them go through the poll process and then do the same process for all the other three questions. Now for any questions you might have about these, this next steps that we just went through. So either raise your hand or type your, your hand, in, type, put your hand up, uh, type your question in the chat box. So we do have some questions in the chat. Um, I can, and just a couple of things that are shared. Tammy uh, mentioned that the district had a strategic plan, which included clubs achieving their goals. Wanted to know about any ideas about how to get clubs excited to work on these master and action plans. She's looking for some ideas. Yeah, I think there are some ideas in the Vision to Success guide. More, I think that what we've kind of been talking about is the best thing you can do, and this is why we took the writing exercise and put it ahead of time, to open up 30 minutes to do practice at the actual event. That seems, from what we've seen, that's the best way to get them excited because they've actually practiced and they see it's not such a big deal. Uh, we think that we've seen clubs stumble in the past by not knowing how to get started. If they get started that night, they're much more likely to go back to their club and say, this is, you know, this is, here's the form. It's not that big a deal. And the master plan, I have to say, the, the thought process behind that visual of having three years was because at the end of those on-site nights, they look around and there's just so much there. And this is the visual to help them see, you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to do it all in year one. Here's what you want to do. Get started with some of it and lay it in. When you lay it in in year two and three, it also helps the president-elect and the president nominee know what's going to be happening in my year as we move through this plan. And there was a question that asked when they get the guide. The, the president and the club liaison will get the guide. And the templates. Yeah, as soon as the event is over, those items will get, you guys will be mailing those things to the club. All right. Um, so they want to know a little bit more about these materials. So I think we're going to have some of those answers for you coming up next. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we'll, let's just go right into that. And then you can, if we have other questions, we can have those in the, at the very final. Sorry. Um, so tonight, we looked at the status assessment, the club profile and the, and the questionnaire, the writing exercise and resource sheets. We looked at our planning documents, the, the master plan and action plan, and the vision to success guide. In addition, we talked about those email chains, which should be up on the website in early December. So we're really excited about all these resources being available to you on the website. 
This is the first and foremost place to look for resources and information about VisionAid. As you can see, um, Jill is coming into the, the, web, the website right now. And once she logs in, the resources will be found under promoting your district where the recording from our first session has been loaded. So any of you who wanted to see that informational one, that the recording is up there now. Building your team is under development right now. And then where you will find the resources that we looked at tonight is under prep for a visioning event. These are these downloadable files. They'll be under event delivery and under event follow-up. So once you can, we'll get to the login in just a second. I will tell you, please be patient with us as we continue to get additional resources loaded on the website. But everything you saw tonight, other than the emails, is there right now. If you're a district coordinator, you either have a login or you hit join IFC, IVFC on the front page. If you're a facilitator, please contact your district coordinator for resources. We'll be continuing to add resources for you to use, so please continue to look for updates here. Rita? So as we move forward in developing training pieces, especially in this new virtual world that we find ourselves in, it is important to find out how we can be of assistance to you. We're gonna do a poll next and we'd like to know what kind of training you need help with. So please indicate on the poll and choose as many as apply. We would like more skills training for our facilitators on how to present the PowerPoint, how to extract ideas from the club members, how to collect the ideas as described, how to make a summary or synthesis of the ideas generated, or how to present the master plan, action plan, and vision to success material and hold the breakout session, or all of the above. So assess your district and see which one of those training pieces you might need more help with. They are actively answering, so I'll give it a few more seconds. Okay. We like active. They do. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give you about five more seconds. Thank you. Mm. All of the above. <laughs> Okay, about 50% of you said all of the above, but mostly the ones that are new, which is the um, part of the planner, which I did, uh, which uh, Kathy and I did with the master plan, action plan, and then the practice, and somewhat on the scribe too. Okay, so usually at the end of the visioning, there are two questions that we ask. So we want to ask them to you right now tonight. Please raise your hand in the participant function and I will call on you to unmute and respond. The questions are, what excites you about what you have seen today and what concerns you? Or if you want, okay, let's see, Bill. Can you okay. unmute? Um, uh, I, uh, I'm excited about, uh, having us provide the clubs more help in moving from visioning to goals and action plan. I think that's a great modification, uh, and, um, while we haven't sent out the writing exercise early, uh, I can see where that would work pretty well. And I'm glad that uh, we've adapted that writing exercise to the new Rotary International Action Plan. I think that's a great step. 
Um, what I'm concerned about is uh, it's <laughs> you guys have gone through, okay, if you're going to do it on Zoom, da -da 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 but that's easier said than done. You know, we have, we have clubs that have virtually no members that are into the Zoom world. Um, and from what we said at our last um, session, uh, you know, I think you're, you're right. There's a lot more tech support required to do one of these via Zoom than what we've done in the past. You know, it's not like, I mean, I, I Zoom our club meetings, the program and so forth, so people can join via Zoom, but there's a whole lot more to it to host a, a Zoom visioning session. So that, that's my concern is all the kind of the tech support that's required to, to do this virtually. Yeah, I, I, Bill, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, I'm one, I'm one of those uh, digital immigrants. And so I'm really looking forward to the next session in two weeks where they're going to go through all of these tech tools and how do you do it? I can tell you that I've been an observer and I was a little leery of how this would, would happen having been in the on-site world with visioning. And it, it, I was in, really intrigued with how engaged the members were and how the tech team moved everything through. So hang on, two weeks from tonight is the virtual session. Jill's gonna talk about that in just a minute, but uh, um, it, it's pretty exciting and, and I was leery about it. So to get my vote, they've, they've done an amazing job. Thank you, Bill. Gail? Thanks. Um, well, I'm going to echo a little bit of what Bill said. Yes, I am very excited. A uh, couple of things. The slimming down of the club profile and the RVQ is huge. I used to hate calculating all those numbers for the RVQ. It was just so stinking hard. Anyway, um, and also the streamlining that you've done to take out the writing exercise. So we used to, at the end of last year, do a short version of this vision to action plan thing because we had gotten trained for that. But incorporating it into a session after they had been there for three and a half hours and trying to get them to do what we did in the breakout tonight was um, virtually impossible, I'm gonna say. They didn't get it, we had to, it was such a broad brush that we had to do. Taking out the writing exercise and now giving us time for that, which I think is much more important just from the fact that they need to walk away with that skill. And the clubs that we did who did that, did better. We saw that they did better. And I'm also excited about your analytics. You know, my district governors, et cetera, are asking for me to provide data that shows that visioning is helping these clubs. And right now, all I have is anecdotal. I say, oh, you know, this club is talking to us four times a year, but that's not good enough for them. So I love the fact that we're going to have some analytics. And I think I've said enough. Thank you so much for this work. I'm very excited. Thank you, Gail. Laura? Laura Tapp? Yes, yeah, so this is going to be quick. Um, I'm new to this completely, so I'm coming in fresh to the whole virtual thing. The thing I'm really excited about is the master planning it seems to really foster creativity. And I think whenever you foster creativity, you foster excitement. I'm very happy about that. And um, the thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is it may be difficult for a club to sort of stay out of the weeds. Um, it may be that you know, if, as a uh, facilitator to really focus in on what they're truly feeling in the club and not let them get too far out. That's my concern. That's the concern of a good extractor. So um, if we have a, some little videos or uh, a session on extracting, that would be one that would be really important. And you'll get some of that um, if you go to the virtual one. Thank you, uh, Patricia. Yes, um, I think I can um, echo also a lot of what Bill and Gail said. The, the piece that I think I'm 
most excited about is, uh, again, that there's not, you know, that a lot of that, you know, the assessment is done and more time is spent on planning because I felt that's where we have been weak uh, by the time, in, in some cases, when we got down to doing the planning, there was 30 minutes left, and the planning is the most important piece. It's like I've got this information, this mm -hmm. great stuff, now where do I go from there? And to really guide people through that, that really gets them thinking and committing, and that I, I'm really pleased to see that. I think that's a, a huge step forward. Um, so anyway, th those are, that's, I think, my biggest takeaway, um, my biggest takeaway. And I would also say that um, again, the tech piece is going to be important because there are people who, who again, don't Zoom very much. And um, we're working on it, but you know that is an issue for some clubs. So in person, I still love in person, but I see that the virtual does have a lot of possibilities, so. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, um, well, number one, clearly, because I accidentally sent it to everybody. I'm excited about the possibility of a virtual trivia night. <laughs> and um, the other thing is, is uh, the planning thing. This is the first time that I've done one of these on the, the, the planning thing at the end that I felt more comfortable in how to deliver it. I have always been, I've never been good at delivering it. I've never been good at, good at developing those things. But doing it tonight in that little small group was the first time that I felt good about it going forward if I had to do that for another club. And my concern, yes, is the, the tech thing. You all, I've done several of these so far, and your all's presentation seems so seamless, like you just, you, you pass it the baton to somebody else, and I'm sure that required some rehearsals or something, I don't know, or you're just really good at it, and you've been doing it for eight months. Um, but that's the thing that I'm most concerned about is making it seem as fluid as you all made it tonight. And, and part of that, Nick, comes the same as when we do on-site is, is preparation and practice. And if we, the same thing that we would have said when we were training for on-site, if we uh, skipped a step or got it out of order, the audience doesn't know. And same thing applies tonight. If we got something a little out of order, we slip around it. And so it's about, you know, preparation and practice and you will get better at it and better at it. And we're gonna put some videos up to help demonstrate it so that you can go review those. Um, and that's actually in one of the emails is here's your role, Nick, for tonight. You're gonna to be presenting the action plan. And here's a link to a video if you wanna go review that before you do the visioning session. Okay, um, Barry had his hand up, but I don't see it up now. Barry, did you wanna say something or not? I, I'm such a techno peasant, I have trouble unmuting. Um, no, I, I, so much of what I was going to say has already been covered. I really, I really love the virtual concept of this now. Um, I, I, I think in what you've done with these forms, it's just phenomenal. Uh, I don't know how long you guys have been working on this, but thank you and congratulations on a job well done. Uh, I, I, I agree with Bill, Gail, Patricia, Rick, I think everybody that's talked. If I miss somebody, Laura, I think I missed her name. Um, but if you, uh, I, I think the, the technology part of it scares me a little bit, and that's all it is. It just scares me a little bit. I, I really think I need, I've got some great people in, in our district that know it far better than me. Uh, I just need to get them on board to, uh, to, to help us out on this. Um, one question I do have with all the changes that, that you made with this, um, are we still talking about accomplishing this in one session now, this whole process? Well, again, we're gonna address this. Um, I, I would say an on-site session would still be um, one session. Right. And virtual is being done by some districts as, as two sessions and others by one session. But they're going to get take a deeper dive into that on the next section. And so, you know, I want to be respectful of your time. If we don't have questions lined up, Jill, maybe we can turn it back to you to talk about that next session. 
Thank you, Kathy. There are a lot of questions about the virtual delivery, how to set it up, what your team look like, what's the technology. But there's a lot to go over. We've got an incredible team of people who are doing this regularly with results and enthusiastic responses from the clubs. These clubs are going from stagnant to engaged and excitement. And we have the skills to help you feel comfortable in getting your clubs comfortable in this world. And I think this is an opportunity that's here to stay for many clubs, even into the future. When we can get back face to face, it will be an alternative delivery model. And with that, we appreciate the commitment that all of you have made to your clubs. We appreciate your commitment to learning a new process. It's gonna help them uh, be more dynamic and engaging. Remember the club doesn't know the process. So just like Kathy said, if you miss something, don't feel bad. Practice, practice, practice. Let us help you feel comfortable with it and make sure you bring these new tools back to your district so your governors and your governors elect know we've got resources to help them to move forward out of this current environment. It's so important. Uh, so if there are any final questions, and if not, uh, we appreciate your time very much. Thank you so much.